This is Jay Big Ticket 23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to customize your HP Z800 workstation to optimize it for gaming or just to get maybe another five years out of it. Um, so, first thing you want to do is go to GreenPCGamers.com and on the top of the page, you want to click on the blog. Then it, you want to search the articles for HP Z800 or you can just search Z800. It's going to bring up an article called HP Z800 Gaming Computer and Other Hardware Upgrades. You want to click on that link uh, because everything we talk about in this video will be on this blog page. Um, we show you the high clock speed CPUs, memory, graphics cards, um, solid state drives, NVMe, a bunch of other accessories. We give you all the information here um, so that you can customize a system based off of your budget. So definitely check this out. Also, if you do build a Z800 or some other type of workstation, you want to share your build, uh, click on this link on the top right. Um, you can share pictures. We'd love to share what you've built on our social media. Um, so let's get to the actual build. Now, there are a few components that we're going to add to our system today, uh, which are going to be the graphics card and the NVMe uh, card with the adapter. Um, the rest of our specs you'll be able to watch on other videos if you want to uh, see how to install them. Um, so like the processor, the X5690 processor, uh, which is high clock speed, uh, about as, almost as fast as you can get on the Z800. Uh, 32 gig of RAM, uh, 256 gig solid state drive. Um, those will all be on other videos if you need help with installing those components. Um, so... Um, our system, like I said, we are installing um, two big upgrades, which are the NVMe.2 drive and the GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. Now, one thing to note is you cannot boot to the NVMe drive. That's why we have another 256 gig solid state drive that's installed. That will be our actual boot device. Okay, so let's continue on um, and we'll go through what we're going to install here. So here's our Z800. Now, this is a refurb system. This system's going on about eight to nine years old now. So it's kind of surprising that it can be a 100, 100 FPS unit just by installing a few components. Um, so here is our NVMe drive with adapter, our 1080 Ti, and we had our power adapters. Um, we need those power adapters because this 1080 Ti hogs a bunch of power. Um, it requires six and an eight pin. Um, here are the ports on our 1080 Ti that we're going to install. Um, now this is an EVGA SE2 um, graphics card. Um, it fits inside this chassis um, and it works really, really well. All right, so here's the back of our chassis. If you want to take a look at it, we've got our network ports. And here's something that's really important. It's really cool about the Z800. It has a 1100 watt power supply standard. So it gives plenty of power for that big graphics card. So the first thing you want to do is remove your side panel. Obviously put the system on its side first. And it, the system's got some really cool um, cooling shrouds or baffles, whatever you want to call them. Um, and we're going to show you quickly that 1100 watt power supply. Um, so again, this is what allows us to install a big bad graphics card like a 1080 Ti without having any power issues. And so th that's how you access the power supply. And next, we're going to go ahead and remove these shrouds. And they pull off pretty easily, and they allow us access to those I.O. slots that we need to see. And then we're also going to pull off the top shroud, which will allow us to see where the prox memory are. And we really just pulled that out to give us a little bit more space um, to install our components. Okay, so our graphics card is going to take up two PCIe slot or two PCI slots, two P, well, and two PCIe slots, um, and we're going to definitely have to grab some power from that auxiliary power um, and get creative here, and we'll show you that here a little bit later in the video. So these are two kind of ancient IDE power. Um, I I always call them IDE power adapter, and we're going to use two of those to convert to six pin. This cable doesn't come with this graphics card, so you will have to buy this if you plan to install a 1080 Ti. And then this is our dual its dual female 6-pin to 8-pin. So those are going to be our power adapters that we use. And this should be standard on your Z800. It's 
So as far as power, two six pan and two of the white um, ancient IDE auxiliary power adapters. So we're just going to go ahead and plug these in. And there's, these are kind of tough to plug in. You want to be kind of firm but, firm but gentle so you don't break them. And that will allow us our six pin power. And then we will plug in our dual female or our dual male from the power supply harness into our dual female six pin adapter. And then that will convert us to our eight pin that we need. Okay, so now we're ready to actually install our 1080 Ti graphics card. All right, so this is a pretty heavy card. Again, there's our six pin and eight pin adapters or power that's required. So this card's pretty heavy. So really you just need to line this card up and once it's lined up with the slot and the PCI bracket area, you just want to kind of guide it right in and it'll drop in for you. And then we just need to plug our power in. So we've got our six pin. And now we have just enough space on our length on the cable to actually plug that in. Um, if you can find a longer adapter cable, it would help you out a little bit here. Um, so we've got our six pin and then we've got our eight pin plugged in. So now the system's not going to bark at us and hold on post saying that we didn't plug that in. Um, all right. So next we're going to do our NVMe.2 install. So as we said earlier, you cannot boot to NVMe.2 on a Z800. Um, you can, you can figure there are ways to actually try to load your operating system to the NVMe, but it just won't find it as a bootable device. So, um, so why would we install it? Well, we're going to use it as a secondary drive. And the reason why we're going to install it is because it's really going to boost IO speed on a system of this age. So it can be three to six times faster than a conventional SATA solid state drive. Um, and so it's, it's really great for installing large programs, uh, games, or files um, because they'll open up really, really fast when you, when you store them on this solid state drive. Um, so it's not something that you necessarily need. You could go, if you don't have budget for it, you could go for a, a SATA, a larger capacity SATA. Um, solid state drive, um, but this drive is is super fast. So if you have budget, definitely consider installing an NVMe.2 solid state drive. All right, so the adapter and the card, um, you can find cards that will work on greenpcgamers.com. So we're going to mount this on the bottom slot to give that graphics card a little bit of extra air, uh, a room to, to breathe, basically. Uh, because we've got two big fans that if this if the if the uh, graphics card needs it, those fans will actually kick on. So we're gonna give it the space. We're gonna install this NVMe.2 solid state drive right in the bottom I/O slot. This card's really really light. So all you, I mean it's the same concept as this graphics card, but you will have to actually push it into the slot. All right, so we've got both of our cards installed. We're gonna put that metal bracket back down. And we're going to put our top processor and memory cooling trough back on. Okay. So we have a little note here saying you can consider leaving this bottom shroud off. Now, you might be thinking, well, that bottom shroud is actually what locks my cards into place. Or my PCI cards into place. But it, we, we tested the system kind of on a heavy load. And it, and it does produce quite a bit of heat inside this this area underneath this shroud um so you could consider not putting the, this shroud back on and just making sure that you don't move the system a bunch so that the, i know the cards wouldn't be locked into place as well as you'd like them to be um but it would give the it gives you a little bit more airflow and it, it seems to keep the system a little bit cooler by not installing the shroud plus it's kind of a tight fit uh with the uh, power adapters when you clip this into place now it's up to you you have to decide what's going to work for you you can either install it or remove it um, some of the other smaller cards like if you go with the 1050 or uh, a 1060 uh, those cards you have no problem leaving the shroud on but 1070s and higher um, you might you might consider leaving it off but like i said monitor it you know uh, do what works for you all right, so now we just need to put our side panel back on. Clips right into place. 
All right, and here's what our system looks like now from the back with our NVMe.2 SSD installed plus our GTX 1080 Ti. We've got three display ports, a HDMI port, and a DVI port. Lots of active ports for a bunch of different displays. All right, so now we're going to just go into Windows 10, and now we need to enable and disk management that NVMe.2 drive. So right-click on Start, go to Disk Management, that disk is going to pop up. We're going to make it a new simple volume so we can make it usable. And we're going to call it the super fast drive because this is where we're going to store our game libraries, uh, many other larger programs that we can fit on there uh, because anything we put on this drive is going to open really, really fast. It's going to boost our I.O. speed on this system. All right, so once we've done that, that drive is now usable. Uh, it's our E drive, super fast E drive. All right, so next step is because you installed a new graphics card, uh, depending on which one you installed, we did a 1080 Ti, so we do need to go to uh, NVIDIA.com and go to the drivers area on the top page. And we are going to, we're going to find the, the driver manually, but if you don't know exactly what driver you have, hopefully you do because you just installed it. But you can click on that auto detect your GPU feature. It takes a little bit longer doing it than doing it manually, uh, but it will work. All right, so so you install wh whatever driver you prefer. Uh, most of the time, you want to do the latest driver to optimize it for all the latest games. Um, it'll give you the option to install what's called the GeForce Experience. Um, if you uh, if you want help optimizing your games, the GeForce Experience is pretty awesome. So I'd recommend trying it. All right, so we're going to go into our device manager and show you what our X5690 CPU looks like. Um, six cores. And then we're going to go and show you our 32 gig of RAM. All right, so this, this kind of breathes new life into uh, a Z800 workstation. This, by, by installing these components, um, or at least the 1080 Ti or a 1080, you have pretty much converted a, an eight to nine year old system into a 100 FPS gaming unit. Um, it's not going to be the greatest 4K gaming unit because um, you will have I.O. issues with that old motherboard. Um, but as far as your most mainstream games, this is going to be a pretty, pretty much a beast still for being 8 to 9 years old. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Also, we do monthly giveaways on GreenPCGamers.com. One of the ways to qualify for those giveaways is to like Green PC Gamers on Facebook. Um, thank you so much for watching this video.